Hey everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performance Shop Lone Star Mopars.com. Friday afternoon after work. Super nice day, 75. Granted, it's really windy, but that's just to be expected here. So, trying to make good use of my time. <laughs> and uh, I've already been out here doing some stuff, getting some uh, projects worked on, completed. And it is time, as I'm still cleaning, still organizing, still populating the uh, U.S. General Master Service Tech Cart thing. <laughs> We've got some stuff in there that needs to be opened up so it can actually be used and uh, clear up some space for other items. So all of this came from National Tool Warehouse. It's my first ever order with National Tool Warehouse. Uh, I also picked up some of the Easy Red stuff, you know, the neck lights. Uh, the quad part tray that I thought was four individual ones, all that stuff was on the National Tool Warehouse order. And this was stuff, it was just, it had really good prices and it was all in stock. And subsequently, all of this was sort of together, so we're just going to roll with it. Um, first up, I guess we'll just stick with sort of that theme, you know, going with the orange uh, U.S. General cart. Uh, this is something I wanted to try out. I wouldn't too sure if I would like it or not it kind of depends on several factors but uh, it is from Lyle everything here is from Lyle I still say it looks like Liesl <laughs> Lyle to me is L-Y-L-E but uh, Lyle they make a ton of stuff a bunch of it gets rebranded you know for uh, tool trucks so you can kind of go direct save a lot of money so if this looks familiar you might understand why uh, this is their part number 49700 these will be available in several colors but what is it it's an air tool holder. You can see there uh, I wrote 1709 just now, so I would know the price because I don't think I know where the packing slip, if there was one. So all this is just the packaging. We'll just have to... S oh, that was easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> so, yeah, it is ready to go, but essentially what this does, you can run screws through it, hooks, whatever you want to do, but this is a magnet. It should be fairly strong. Yeah, if it goes through the mat, I mean, I know we've got something of decent quality here. So the way this would work, you would have this on the side of your box or your cart or a wall or a pegboard or whatever. And then, of course, your uh, airline fitting would come in and it would hold the tool. Uh, if you want it to hold the airline itself, you can slide that in possibly. Kind of depends on some factors. But, uh, yeah, I figured whatever I was using, probably the impact or ratchet, uh, would be able to hang right here. And I would give it a go. That is a little pricey, in my opinion. Uh, 1709 I would kind of like to see that come in maybe like 999 and then if you buy two of them you know you get them for like sub $20 somewhere in there but who knows might love it might hate it and again I can't off the top of my head think of all the colors but I will have it linked down below for you once more I make nothing off of that don't make anything off of mentioning these or linking them either but alpha gloves 20% off with a discount code of Lone Star Continuing on, we're getting now to the things that are going to be more difficult for me to get out of the package. This actually costs less. It is Lyle's part number 55000. It is a magnetic soldering clamp. So, pretty basic here, but um, I've kind of wanted to try it. Sometimes I'm not happy with, you know, like the third hand things. I've been wanting to try like a solder mate, and it's just you kind of have to find somewhere that has those in stock it's not the easiest thing to do and then especially if that's all you're ordering so uh but right here the way they describe it offer an extra pair of hands when soldering and you can kind of see they've got it set up i guess in that case it's a vice and it sort of shows it holding the wires in place uh, let's just go ahead and read this i'll bring it up here and you can enjoy looking at that Alligator clamps firmly hold wires in small parts when soldering. Flexible design allows different ways to attach and hold wire. The clips and base are magnetic and can be attached to any ferrous surface. So the clips and the base. Really? Well, I'll check that out. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Base is also a hex and can fit in a vise when needed. So. I think you can tell here that this is hex shaped, so again they're saying you can clamp down on that, can hold it with pliers, whatever you need to do. There is the magnet. I don't know about this being the clips themselves magnetic. I don't know if it means like, you know, it'll be held in place or, you know, if it's like a stiff joint. We're, we're going to find out though. <laughs> so bear with me here as we unearth this thing from its plastic coffin. And uh, this kind of gives you an idea, you know, what we're looking at. It's just sort of like a tin soldier man, right? So standard affair on the alligator clips. I don't see how... Oh, that's what they mean. 
When they said the alligator clips are magnetic, I was thinking like right here they must say that there's a magnet and you can just stick it to something, but no. So this is kind of nice. You would need like a special application where all of this would function in order to recreate this. But as is right now, like this would go down. That's not going through the mat, so it's not near as strong as that one. But assuming my finger was magnetic, you would have that resting there. And then, of course, I have this hand, and I would have this hand because this would be self-supported. I'm not having to, like, hold the wire and come in and, you know, twist the wire into place. It's just the helping hands are super nice. So if you dismantle this, obviously, you know, you can use this and kind of, like, extend your run uh, if you wanted to. Or maybe, and this is something that I always have issues with and don't understand why people... It's like people design and make things, but they don't, like have practical experience in the real world outside of like the most simplistic scenario right so like this is great you've got wire one you've got wire two and you're going to join them but what happens if you've got wire one and wire two but wire one and wire two are in a massive harness right and so you don't just have you know yellow with a black tracer and yellow with a black tracer and you're going to you know repair the connection you've got like 19 other wires you know or even like on late model stuff it's even worse and you've got to go and you've got to fish it out sometimes it's nice to be able to just like group you know as many wires as you can into a clamp like this or something similar or a cable tie them and because if you don't you've got everything falling down and it just creates a mess but yeah this is kind of an interesting little setup you could do all kinds of crazy stuff with it so uh, we will see. I uh, will put it to use, obviously, where this would be, like, super handy, just rudimentary, again, keeping it as basic as possible. A, a bench top repair, granted, you will need a steel tabletop of some sort, because otherwise you're not getting any benefit from this being wood. A saving grace for those of you that prefer or have woodwork surfaces, like they said, you can put this in a vise. But where I'm thinking of it, just in the most basic sense possible, where could I think of an application where this goes to a metal surface and if one of these had to come off and also go to a metal surface, it's a frame rail, right? So let's just say you've got a fuel pump down there uh, or maybe it's like trailer lights, something like that, you know, they never work anyway, but you know, God forbid you're trying to repair them. This would be like a really, really useful little product, especially if you had several of these, uh, which if you do use this a lot, you probably would want that in part so you don't lose one or accidentally and you know by by saying lose we're saying like you left this stuck somewhere right and then it literally drove away uh, it wasn't anything nefarious by a customer or a coworker. like it's kind of on you but you can also say you lost it and sort of uh save the ego a little right uh but with it being magnetic you know if you've got something weird where i'm just i'm holding this wire in place or i've got some other deal or it's just held in place by you know a wire loom that's uh, anchored to a rail or a fender liner or something. I can use this clip then to pull everything else away. You get the idea. The sky is the limit, but I think it's a pretty decent price for what it is. We'll have to see how well it holds up. The clips themselves are... I'm not going to dare manipulate this because I don't want to fall apart. But they actually just uh, sort of have a crimp on them and then are just pressed in there. So... Uh, not a bad pickup in my humble opinion there. So this next item is not something that I have to have right now, but it's something that I wish I would have had earlier. <laughs> and uh, I sort of sat there and looked at a lot of options, and this is what I thought was sort of the best bang for the buck. So it is Lyle's part number 56650. Some of you might know that one right off the bat. What is it? It is a seal puller, and this isn't just the standard seal puller. No, no, no. We splurge, spent that what? 1738 on the adjustable seal puller so uh, they say this one adjusts to five positions how does that happen well you've got the head you've got the handle you've got hopefully oh it's knurled we'll have to check that out a little set screw there and it will just thread through the handle uh, incorporating this at straight you know stereotypical el cheapo seal pullers or you can angle it which is pretty beneficial sometimes especially tight spots but yeah my seal pullers have always been flat screwdrivers here at the house <laughs> so, you know you, you get by but like i say there is a time where having a nice nice tool the proper tool is very beneficial i will say like this type of 
packaging always doles out the product. Uh, doesn't make it look as like good as it could. Granted, I don't know that this is the most impressive thing you'd ever want to look at, but just kind of keep that in mind. You know, if you're sitting here and thinking like, yeah, that thing doesn't look good. And I'm pretty confident you can find this for far higher prices with uh, other companies' names and logos on it. So, barely got that blade out on the Cuttix. <laughs> it's still doing its thing. Uh, let's see here. It's kind of hard with the camera here. I'm having a hard time seeing over. But yeah, thinking back to the truck, uh, where I really wish I would have had this is, as you might have guessed, pulling the seal on the transmission. <laughs> so uh, that said, the way this is going to set up, you've got your uh, rivet right there, and that's going to keep the head in place, which is super nice because that way, let's say that you're adjusting this and you drop the set screw, you'll probably find the set screw eventually, possibly with a magnet from something like that. But it keeps the head in place <laughs> so uh, let me see if I can do this without killing myself let's get the gloved hand up there man almighty there we go that initial little burst was pretty crazy so there it is in tomahawk form if you have to uh, use this for the zombie apocalypse can't really anchor it unless you come in and drill and tap but hey keep it in mind uh, I guess you wouldn't have to tap just make it drill and you've got a nice little hatchet there <laughs> You'd have to sharpen the edge, but you know, if you get in a bind. Anyway though, what I want to highlight and why I spun it this far, you've got three holes and you've got two holes, right? So our first position, if I can rough this in, it's almost like a revolver. You would come in and obviously depending on where you're at, and in some cases you might want to be roughly 90 degrees from the said seal because you might have leverage. Uh, you might be able to like pull this into an immovable object and create more leverage. All sorts, again, that's why the indexing head is nice. <laughs> that is slot one. Uh, slot two is not going to be the most exciting slot. Why? Well, that would be your pretty much a default one. Straight handled versions of this are probably 10 to $15, and getting this for $17.38, I felt like it was a no-brainer. Obviously, this same setup, you can flip the handle, recreate it, you get the idea. And then right spinning her like so, we would have the ability to do this, all right? Sort of a slightly different angle. And then the bottom one here, boom. So that's, again, you can't really do too, too much crazy with this, but if you're like, man, that's really close to straight up. Well, this is dead center and you can kind of see the holes occluded a little bit. So, I mean, it's just, very very marginal changes but again that is a selling point and that is a reason why you might want to come in and grab this item something i did not know until i just held this up to my face because i had never looked at it prior to that in addition to being knurled pretty nicely there is a detent pretty sweet let me get that to focus a little better for you so yeah right there just like on the square drive of a ratchet there's the knurling not super aggressive, not like mini volcanoes or anything, but it is sufficient and I would much rather prefer uh, have that. And I guess this is actually held in only with the detent, so there are no threads. That was just an assumption I made. Uh, that would make doing your uh, zombie apocalypse preparation even easier. Let me see if I can... There we go. Very positive click, at least here initially. Uh, the handle, I personally would have loved to see it come up just a little bit more so it's kind of a i say two component but it's dipped and then with a textured dip so two dips basically uh if we could have had the hand maybe i don't know even go over that you know because uh, as you can see like where my hand's wanting to rest with this is way up here so index finger is off thumb is off minor complaint for 1738 i mean you can plasti dip it whatever you need to do but uh, yep that's out of the way and that's more packaging i can get out of my life <laughs> and this last item is again something that i wished i would have had uh, i have deep they're not like the greatest quality you know like big hose picks a bunch of them i think a performance tool which is telling you enough right there but uh the problem you have is when you use those and like you want to reuse the hose right like uh, if I have friends bring me, you know, like, oh, we got a tuner and a 180 degree thermostat, it's like, cool, <laughs> you know, and I have to get their, you know, radiator hose off. It's a situation where 
I don't really want to put a hole in it. You know, it's, it's, if it's a deal where it needs to be replaced, fine, I don't care. You know, hopefully they have it or we can get one before I do the job. But uh, so many times it's like, this is a really new car, right? You know, we're talking late model charger and challenger stuff. And it's like, yeah, I got my tuner, you know, I need you to put the thermostat in. And she's like, okay, you know, swing it over. And I don't want to put a hole in a radiator hose that is perfectly fine right and so where this is leading to you is a hose spoon and there's surprisingly not many hose spoons available you would think this would be like the standard you know where you would start like i get it you know like high mileage stuff let's replace the hose anyway while we're in there but that's not always the case and sometimes the hose has to be removed just to gain access to something else and unless you enjoy like spending money that you don't have to spend on radiator hoses this is a very viable pickup. Now, interestingly enough, I promise this came from National Tool Warehouse. I cannot find it on their website. Uh, everything else, I just typed in the part number, you know, so this one is 82130. Typed that in, nothing came up. Typed in hose spoon, nothing came up. Typed in Lyle radiator hose spoon set, nothing came up. Typed in Lyle radiator hose, two things came up, not this. Typed in Lyle 821. You get the idea. I don't know. <laughs> the reason I'm telling you that, I don't know if this is phased out. I don't know if it was discontinued. I don't know if it's out of stock and they just politely pull it so you're not disappointed. Uh, but all I was trying to find it for real quick was to see the price point. I want to say uh, if this was crazy expensive, I would not have bought it. Um, but I believe it would be around the $20 mark. So let's just call it like best case scenario around 15, worst case scenario like upper 20s. But I'm inclined to say it was like 17, 22, somewhere in that ballpark. But uh, yeah, sub 30. And when you consider that it's two pieces, it sort of makes it a little easier to justify. But uh, if you look here, you can kind of. That's a pretty bad graphic. <laughs> like the tool is prominent. I don't think most people are going to know what's going on there. That almost looks like a vacuum line or something. But uh, this is designed to remove radiator hoses from fittings and clamps, right? And if we spin it over onto the back side, I guess we should have done that with the seal puller now that I think about it. So this is where they're trying to simulate, you know, the radiator hose. Again, that one's not a great picture, but like if you think of you're in the engine bay looking out, maybe it makes sense. Uh, designed to remove radiator hoses from fittings and clamps, uh, wider blades reduce the chance of damage when removing the long blade is used for pulling the hose off, while the short blade is designed for pushing. Handles are dual material for comfort and grip. And again, if you didn't know, if you got ideas because you do stuff and get mad because there's not a tool, pitch it to Lyle. They might make it any legal things or if you get royalties or patents trade. I don't know that. I'm just it's down here on this. <laughs> just throwing it out there for you. So flipping it back around, obviously red and black. I think that will work for most people. Would it be my favorite? No. Would I prefer to have, you know, a different color scheme? 100%. Uh, it sort of also depends. Is this comfortable? <laughs> you know, uh, that's one of the things that I value. Uh, and it sort of offsets anything like that. But uh, I have never had a hose screw. So this will be a very welcome addition. Again, the way this would work, let's say that we are outside the truck, right? And we got to take that upper radiator hose off. Spoiler alert, I'm about to do because I finally found a better one. Uh, we would come in, and if it's for some reason, if it's a brand new hose that hadn't run, you're probably going to get it off, right? But if for some reason it's like seized up or it's the factory one and it's sat for, you know, 20 years and hadn't cracked, but you're going to get it off, you would come in, and even if this is a plastic, you know, nipple off the radiator, you would come in, you nestle this, and you just start going. The short one is the pusher. Handles are surprisingly not terrible. It's not near as soft as I thought it would be. That said, that's probably a good thing. I would prefer that this last me. I would sacrifice a little bit of comfort in the hand. You know, like Philo Organics type stuff would be super cool, but the hard plastic, I might get a little bit more lifespan out of it, and that would be desirable. Uh, in terms of the contours there of the short one, there you go. Hopefully this finish holds up better than my performance tool ones. Let's say that. Uh, we should probably relief cut right here. That would make our lives easier, wouldn't it? So there we go there. And then this one right here might be kind of nice. Why? Well, I could possibly pull with it. That's what it's designed to do. Maybe that's actually how we'll use the tool. I'm trying to get some of this plastic off. It's like vacuum formed around there. 
So, this is the hook. You're doing a terrible job with this review and tool haul, sir, and you get drug off the stage. Or, uh, you could probably play and annoy your cat with it. Um, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you've got little items over here, it's like the claw, right? You know, like I need this aluminum tubing. Let me just wheel it over this direction. See how, how useful that is, right? But, uh... Or realistically you get the deal you would get this up under and you just pull and so if that stupid thing is seized you just start pulling the other thing that's nice about the spoon when it's pointed even if you've got the hook like this if it's a sharp point you start digging in and then when you want to like try and slide it a little bit maybe come 90 degrees this way 90 degrees that way try to create more you know free space to break the suction and get the thing off this will be super nice because again it is a spoon this is think again of a spoon it would be like your your last choice item for steak <laughs> you know you want the knife you would take the fork if you don't have the fork you would take the knife and eat off of it the spoon wouldn't be your choice why because it doesn't cut as well and that's the selling point here for radiator hose removal so uh, i'm sure we could use that for other things like stubborn big vacuum lines like brake booster lines stuff like that but uh, that, I believe, is it. So, we got ourselves the seal puller, which let's spin this around and uh, quickly cover it. I mean, there's it showing you the same five positions I did. Two hook sizes are, you know what, I'll just read it, you look at the tools. It's way easier that way. Two hook sizes easily remove most oil and grease seals where clearance is a problem which is often going to be the case. Now, if this is like bench top stuff, you got it made in the shade. Go, you go full throttle there. You might not even need to justify the expense of the indexed head. Uh, where clearance is a problem, remove the pin to reposition the head. The adjustable head works great on front wheel drive transaxles. Also works on front crankshaft seals without removing the radiator. So that is it. That is my haul from National Tool Warehouse. Again, it was a little bigger than this. Why? because we brought in some other items. There's one more item that I'm going to make a standalone on just because I think that's the best way to address that one. But uh, yeah, it didn't really break the bank here and we got some pretty good stuff. Ironically, this is almost the most expensive item and you wouldn't think that would be the case. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's going to save me a ton of sp The packaging is really not that bad. It's just when you're trying to like populate your new cart, you know, you need things pulled and set to the side. The real downside with stuff like this, you could put them up top, you know, in like slots, but they almost need drawer layout space. So uh, we'll be working on that. But yeah, got some hose spoons. We got a seal puller. We got to, uh, going to have to try that out, see if we like it. If we do, we might get more, uh, although they are kind of high in my opinion. And then we got the uh, little uh, solder buddy down there. So. That was it, National Tool Warehouse. I'll have everything linked down below. If you've never bought from them, I've only bought once, but it was a good experience here this first time, so I can't complain, and I won't. <laughs> and, uh, obviously, what I want to know is if you have used any of this stuff, whether it be the adjustable, indexable you know, seal puller, whether it be the hose spoons, if you're like, oh, no, no, you don't want those hose spoons. You need to get this set of hose spoons. They're way better. Uh, they're cheaper. They barely cost more. Whatever expert opinion you have, hopefully... From first-hand experience feel free to leave that that is the end goal is to help people out if somebody sees this and then cool that's what I need and then there's like four or five comments and everyone's like no 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 <laughs> yeah go buy brand a it's cheaper and it's better or you know if they're like oh those are the best on the market you know it's the same as insert you know rebrands B and C here and it's fractions of the price uh, whatever insights you have to help people out feel free to leave them again I do a lot of this stuff blind sometimes that's great sometimes it's comical sometimes it's terrible <laughs> But I'm here doing it. So, uh, with that said, again, Lyle, uh, American company, and uh, very kind of like Channel R. I mean, just reasonable prices. Again, I'm a little salty about that one. I feel like it's more, it's probably the magnet that drives the cost up. Maybe it's the powder coating in small batches. I don't know. But uh, everything else, I don't really have issue with price wise. So, uh, with that said, it's all linked for you. Leave your opinions, leave your thoughts. And if you don't know how it works here, I've got the timestamps, I've got the links. And at the end of the video, I ask for your thoughts. And also, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you like a lot of what I'm doing, I encourage you to subscribe. There's a ton of you that watch the channel all the time, comment on stuff frequently, and you're still not subscribed. Uh, YouTube is weird. It unsubscribes people all the time. Sometimes, like, you don't even know you're not, not subscribed because it, if you watch a channel, everything they do, 
when they put a new video out, they almost always stick it in your timeline, in your feed, so you can find it easily. But uh, I do encourage you to subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. That'll help grow the channel. Uh, the more people watch the channel, the more people that can be told about the channel, the more people that can be told, the more people that watch, the more people that watch, uh, the more people we have coming in, give you better opinions and experience and feedback on this stuff. And uh, in terms of me making more content, uh, the money doesn't grow on a tree. I do this as a passion and a hobby. Uh, and obviously, luckily, I'm, I'm starting from very little, just the basics, and we've been building this up over time. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff I'd like to bring in, but it's like way too spendy. And uh, that's where, like, you know, the, the YouTube revenue would be nice from a larger audience. We could do way more stuff. So that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it, if you will. But uh, also, if you don't know, new videos every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Texas time, Central Standard, if some of you prefer that. And uh, Wednesdays, we usually have tool content or automotive content, something. And uh, if you ring the bell, jump your charger across the creek, use the push <laughs> hose spoon and the pool hose spoon simultaneously while soldering ring the bell youtube just might notify you again otherwise 9 a.m saturday and wednesday but with that said i hope you have a fantastic weekend more importantly i hope i catch you back here next time for more action from the shop